Okay, remember that they are changing my voice. So this video series is about understanding Proverbs 30 verse 4. And in order to do that, we're going to break down the different components. First, I'd like to start off by pointing out that the last verse of the last chapter, Proverbs 29 verse 27, says the righteous detest the dishonest, the wicked detest the upright. Now, if we go back to Proverbs 26, 28, it says a lying tongue hates those it hurts and a flattering mouth works ruin. So the righteous detest the dishonest because they're hurting people, right? As people are dishonest by their actions, people are dishonest by the Royal African Falcon top martial arts order, etc. And we'll get into that. Even the fact that when it talks about tongues, it's subtly and otherwise alluding to language, among other things, right? Body language, spirit language. Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic language. So as we see that the, the author wants you to focus on that idea, it goes into Proverbs 30. The sayings of Agur, the sayings of Agur, son of Jack, an inspired utterance. This man's utterance to Ithiel. And he, he starts his utterance by saying, I am weary, God, but I can prevail. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. And so we see in the New Living Translation, it says, Who holds the wind in his fists? Right? In his fists. And so we know that it is a very martial arts like explanation, right? If martial arts isn't mind, body, soul, and spirit and character, then what is it? Right, if it isn't a, f a fighting application of this, and which is the highest application, right? David versus Goliath, you know, the, the idea that's superimposed on, then what is it? So now let's go to Proverbs 8 and let's understand what water is, right? The water has to do with purifying, cleansing, the water of life, okay? In Revelation, it talks about that the righteous are, you know, like the rushing waters is what they're compared to, the righteous in the spiritual realm. We see in Proverbs elsewhere it says wisdom, you know, is like a rushing stream. So the spirit of the righteous has wisdom, has justice, right, has, has vengeance in mind. We see Proverbs 8.27, it says, I was there when he set up, excuse me, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters could not overstep his commands, when he marked out the foundation of the earth. Okay, so wisdom was there when God gave the waters the boundaries. You know, the waters its boundary, right? We see the beach is like the desert. There's parallels there. So when it says, who has gone up to heaven and come, um, and come down, whose hands have gathered up the wind, who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak, it's referring to the idea of holy water, right? Martial arts holy water, where God's wisdom has defined who's allowed to wrap it in a cloak. And we see in Isaiah 59, it says he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak right passion so who has been allowed to wrap up the holy water of god okay in passion is kind of concealed right it's his garment to some degree a cloak but it's also something that you have to kind of calculate if you're not him right you can kind of see something going on but you don't really see right that's why it says he who has an eye and let them see right and everyone with an eye will see it taking place right every eye We'll see him, right? Everybody who's human enough and who's divine enough to have an eye will see him, okay? So as we look at this, right, 
we see that they're not describing a white or Jewish or LGBT person or someone in the military, etc., etc. right? Why? Because they don't really do martial arts, right? They do secular kind of, you know, mockery. No offense to anybody, right? They're American martial arts. They're not universally sound, right? They're built on ill-gotten gains. And they're martial arts that they're allowed by a wicked system. For example, I'm persecuted. And one of the things they do is they go way out of their way. And they've told me this themselves, mind you. They go way out of their way to keep me from doing martial arts. Which means every other martial arts system on this planet is invalid. Because you're supposed to put a light, a, la a lamp on its stand, right? You know, one who's slacking his work is brother to one who destroys. So why are they allowed to? You think their allegiance to propaganda, which is a form of sorcery and seen in Revelation 22, outside the gates are the sorcerers, those who practice magic arts? You think that people who practice sorcery put on the armor of God and that therefore they couldn't be stopped? No, because the Bible says in Matthew 5, those who are persecuted are the children of God, right? The kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We see in Paul's letters, all who wish to live a godly life in Christ Jesus must be persecuted. So we see they don't really do martial arts. We see they're not really deep. And you see they're not really persecuted. That's why, you know, it's correct in saying the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people who will, do, who will um, bring forth its fruit, okay? Now keep in mind, who wrote the story? Is this a story for African martial artists? No, this is a story by white people, by Jews, that's designed to mislead people. And they wanted people to think that the people related to the scribes were magically chosen by God. But they knew that they couldn't in the end, you know, after years and years of lying to people and people being very well aware of that, they couldn't in the end say that it was magically them who was chosen by God. So what they said was that the kingdom of heaven was going to be taken away from. However, this is also somewhat true because in the beginning, they were some kind of genes in the early primitive humans and they had a chance to get the kingdom of heaven. So their chance as the spirit of their people was something that they wasted. They lost because they didn't scramble to do the right thing. And we'll get to that in later videos. They weren't diligent. They weren't prudent. And again, this is not to insult but is to clarify why Proverbs 34 must be talking about me, okay? You know them by their fruits, not their flesh. You know them by their fruit, not their endless genealogies. The Bible complains about them and their endless genealogies. Look it up. If you have any questions and you think I'm being racist or something, please put in the comments and I'll tell you exactly why that's silly. Okay. We also know in Proverbs, excuse me, in Isaiah 28, 17, it says, Make righteousness and justice the measuring line and plume line. And hail will sweep away your refuge to lie, and water will overflow your hiding place. What is the water? It's the water of God's spirit, the water of purifying, the water of righteousness. So those people who are too wicked to then ascend into the next realm, right? Into, into the realm of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, in reality, not in some magic game, but in reality. They're washed away like the floods in, in Noah's Ark, right? In the beginning of the Bible, God is hovering above the water. So it's the Spirit of God is represented there, okay? It, it, it comes with the Spirit of God. It's life, it's righteousness, it's justice. It sweeps away their refuse to lie. It overflows their hiding place, and there's nothing they can do. We're also going to connect Isaiah 30 to this eventually. And it also talks about striking, right? The blows of his arm. He will strike them down, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. Every stroke he lays on them with his punishing club. And we'll see how it's not just spiritually speaking, but it's the inhabitants of the earth who are harming each other because their actions are lying. And as we went uh, over in the beginning of this video, right, um, a lying tongue, you know, someone who's lying that by their actions, by their words, what have you, hates those it hurts. And that includes their own children. That includes whoever they marry, etc., etc. So they're harming each other by default. And so when it says who's... And one thing for, you know, there's, all these things are important to remember, but it's very important for you to remember that in Proverbs 34, when it says, whose hands have gathered up the wind, okay, it's talking about on the highest level, not some worm who's a president or something who's who caught a bunch of armies together, not some UN, United Nations person. It's talking about the spirit of God and where, you know, God has allowed the wicked to harm each other. That is the, the, the formula the Bible uses. The Bible uses the form of the double-edged sword of Scripture, right? It uses the formula of God's Spirit handing them over to their unnatural desires, as it says, I believe, in Paul's letters, to their wicked desires. They're handed over to each other to suffer. And then when their flesh dies, they get marshaled into hell based on what they've done in this life.
all those who don't obey God through me. And we'll get to that. Del-